What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. Today, we're going to make our character shoot fireballs. Everybody loves fireballs, right? So let's get to it. Let's start off by creating our fireball scene. So let's just create a new scene here. And to our scene, we're going to start off with an Area 2D. Okay, our Area 2D, we'll just name it Fireball. Okay, and first things first, let's just save that scene. All right, fireball.tscn sounds good. Save. Now let's add our animated sprite. So here, animated sprite. Okay, and then to this, right? If you remember, we're going to create a new sprite frames. Click in the sprite frames, and then we need to add our sprites. Okay, so let's just add our fireball sprites here. Instead of default, let's rename this to shoot. Okay, and then we'll add our fireball, right? One and two, first and second frames. Change the FPS to 12, set looping to on. All right, that looks good. Okay, jump back out over here. Let's, uh, Zoom in, right? We can watch it play. Okay, let's turn that off. <laughs> okay, we'll also add a collision shape 2D. So that eventually we can have the fireball collide with things. Okay, to that, add our rectangle shape. Make sure that our pixel snap is set to on. And then let's just, as best as we can, set that to our uh, fireball size. That, that looks about right. Now let's add a script to our fireball. And add the script, all the defaults are fine. Jump in here, take out a bunch of this stuff we don't need. I don't think we need the ready function, but we'll just leave it in there for now. It's just always, right, we're always using the physics process, so let's add our physics process and just put the password in there, or this pass keyword, so it doesn't complain at us about we don't have anything in this block. Okay, so now, if you've been following along since the beginning, you probably remember that we're using move in, or that we're using the move and slide function to control our player, right? As you can see down here, move and slide, right? To move our player around the screen. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different for the fireball. Because the fireball doesn't need to interact with the environment the way the player does, right? With uh, gravity and different collisions and recalculating velocity when you hit a surface. We're not gonna do anything of that. We're not gonna do anything like that with the fireball. So we're gonna use the translate function instead. The translate function is simpler and just move an object by a given vector too. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we'll jump back to our fireball script. Start off with adding some constants here. So we'll add a constant for speed. Let's make that equal to 100. We'll add a variable for our uh, velocity variable. Okay, velocity equals vector 2. Just an empty vector too. Okay. And then let's, we can get rid of this pass now. Inside of the physics process, let's do a... Okay, so our fireball is only going to go horizontally. We're not going to shoot vertically right now, right? We're just going to shoot horizontally. So we're going to set our velocity.x. Right, so along velocity.x along the x-axis. So velocity dot x equals right speed right our constant that we set which is a hundred times delta okay so the thing to note here is that we're multiplying delta into our velocity right we didn't do that previously with the player scene because we because we use the move and slide function which already multiplies delta into its calculations behind the scenes right for translate 
it doesn't take the it doesn't multiply delta automatically so we need to go ahead and put it in there manually so there it is right velocity dot x equals speed times delta and then we're going to say translate this is a translate function right and the translate function just says we're going to move by a certain vector 2 right so for that Right, we have a velocity dot x, we're gonna move that, right? So we can say vector two. Actually, no, scratch that. We'll just say velocity, right? Because all we did was we set the velocity dot x to something over here. Our velocity dot y is blank, it just remains zero. So we can just say translate velocity. Okay, and then let's see if we save that and then we run it, we should see it traveling across the top of the screen. Okay, right? So we know our velocity uh, calculations and or this translate is working properly. Also, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna make it play the animation. So we're gonna say animated sprite dot play and then we wanna play our shoot animation. All right, so let's try that again. Might be a little bit hard to see Oops, not that one. We just want to play our fireball scene. If you can see up here on, in the tail, I don't know if you could see it. Let's try it again. But it's animating. Okay. Alright, so. Our fireball scene looks pretty good. But, before moving on to making our player actually shoot the fireballs, we have one more important chunk of code to add to the fireball. So we saw that our fireball moves and eventually travels off the screen. So where do you think the fireball went? Where is it now? Well, in case you don't already know, that fireball still exists and is actually still moving through space that the game is always tracking. That fireball might eventually be, you know, by now be hundreds, thousands. If you wait a long time, it could be millions of pixels away from us but the game is still moving and tracking that fireball. The only thing is that we can't actually see the fireball. Now, this is not a big deal if we were going to only have one fireball, but we're going to have a bunch of them all over the place, right? We're going to be shooting them all over the place, hitting the bad guys and everything, right? We could possibly be shooting hundreds or thousands of fireballs out there while we're playing. If we shoot enough of them and they continue to exist and move forever, we're eventually going to reach a limit where our computing device, be it our computer, our phone, our tablet, what have you, it's not going to have enough processing power to manipulate all those rogue fireballs and the rest of the game that we can actually see. This will eventually result in the game slowing down and or even crashing. So the solution to this is to remove the fireballs from processing and from memory, right? Basically destroy the fireball when it's no longer useful. In this case, our fireball is no longer going to be useful once it leaves the screen. So let's see how to do that. All right, so let's go back to our fireball um, scene here. And we're going to add something new. This one's going to be called a visibility notifier. Here we go. Visibility notifier 2D. Okay, so that's going to be a child of our fireball. Now the visibility notifier can has these signals, right? These are going to be our first chance to work with signals. There's a signal called screen exited, right? Pretty self-explanatory. Once this thing exits the screen, this signal fires. Right, so what we're going to say is we're going to say, right? Now that this is part of our fireball, we're going to say once it exits the screen, we want to send this signal to something. Okay, so we'll highlight the screen exited, we'll click connect. And then we need to go and select what we want the signal to go to, right? We want the signal to go to the fireball and everything contained within it, right? Because we want to destroy this. So we're going to say a signal goes to the fireball, right? Make function is set to on. It's going to automatically create this function listed in here. And, and then we're going to say connect. Okay, and you see it threw us back into our fireball script with this new function. 
Okay, and we're just going to add one line of code inside of this function. So let's take out this pass. Okay. And that one line of code that we're going to write is the function QFree. Right, QFree is basically it just destroys the object. It gets rid of it from memory. This object no longer exists anymore. The instance no longer exists. So then the program doesn't need to track it. Right, so... After we add this, we're good with the fireball. It'll destroy itself when it goes off the screen. And we no longer have to worry about our game slowing down and crashing because we shot too many fireballs. Now, let's use our code to instance a fireball and add it to the stage 1 scene. So, let's just save this first. Alright, stage 1 scene. Um, let's see. We're going to go into the player because the player is going to be the one that decides when and where the fireball comes out. So we jump into our player script. Okay. First, we need to preload our fireball scene, which we'll do inside of a constant. So let's add that up here. We'll say constant fireball equals preload. And we're going to preload our fireball scene. Okay, so res colon slash slash fireball dot tscn. Okay. This, uh, you, you can probably guess what this does, right? It just takes this, this scene and it preloads it in, into the memory so that it's right there. It, it's loaded and it's waiting for you when when you call it or whenever you want to use it. So that's that. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to code for the input that's actually going to shoot the fireball, right? We have actions, right, for running right and left and jumping up, but we don't know what key we're going to press to get a fireball. So we're going to need to put that in. So similar to how we did before with the movements, let's just... Um, I'll type it. I won't be lazy. Okay, so if input is action, we're going to just, we're going to use is action just pressed so that we can't rapid fire fireballs by just holding down the button. If you want, you can do that, but um, yeah, I'm just going to do it this way. So is action just pressed. Okay. And then for this, I feel like I want to use the tab key. So the tab key is under, let's see if I can just type this right, focus next. Okay, so if action is just press UI focus next. Okay, so if we press the tab key, then what do we want to do? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create an instance of the fireball. So we'll just create a variable inside of here, fireball equals right, our constant right, our fireball scene that, that we set up here right so var fireball equals our fireball scene dot instance right so now basically we just created that thing in memory right we created one fireball in memory and there it is now we also need to add this fireball to our our scene right our stage one scene we want it to be a child of the stage one scene and not the player so to do that since we're in our player scene we can do a get parent which will get the scene that we're in right if you can see in here we go to stage one we have our player scene its parent is stage one right so if we jump back into our script, that's what we're doing. So we're getting the parent, we're getting the stage one scene. So get parent dot add child. And what are we going to add? We're going to add what we just created over here, right? We're going to add this fireball. Right, get parent dot add child fireball. All right. So with that, let's try to run our game and see what happens. Okay, here's our guy. We'll press the tab key. 
and we see a fireball, but it's all the way up here, right? That, that's, that's not going to work. So it's good. We see the fireball. It's working on Q, right? When we press our tab key, but it's not where we want it to be. So let's fix that. To tell the game where we want the fireball to come out, we're going to use a position 2D object added to the player. So we'll grab the player. And as a child, we're going to add a position 2D. Okay, and we'll take a look here. Now we're going to move this around. Whoops. Let's take the position 2D. What am I not doing right here? Um, player. Let's make the object selectable again. Okay. Now, where you see this, these crosshairs, right, where this green intersects this uh, orange or whatever it is, that's where the fireball is going to appear. Or, th or that's where the position 2D coordinates are, right? So, if we jump down here, we can see, we can manipulate it by, if we know exactly, right, our dimensions or our coordinates, we can do it here. And these coordinates are relative to the... Um, origin of the parent right so as we move this around we can see the transform position over here adjusting to fit so why don't we just fire the fireball from here that that seems like a good enough place to do it okay so we'll put that back like that we'll make sure the children aren't selectable again so i'll just click that button there and then let's jump back into our script then to set our fireball's position, we're just going to add this code in here. It's going to say fireball dot position equals our position 2D. If I can get it to come out there, position 2D dot global position. That's all we need to get the fireball to come out in the right spot. So let's run our game again and see if it works. Okay. You can shoot from the ground. You can shoot in the air. Great. Right? Now we see that our fireball comes out in front of our player just like we want it to. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. We did a lot of great work today. While to the untrained eye, it may seem that all we did was make one fireball appear on the screen, rest assured that we really accomplished a lot. Sometimes what may seem to be the simplest of features in a game will actually take you the most planning and steps to implement. By my count today, we learned how to use six new functions, two new objects, and how to use signals for the very first time. Now, if you ask me, that's a whole lot more than simply adding one fireball to the screen. So we'll let those new concepts sink in and next time we'll work more on our fireballs. You may have already noticed if you're doing this at home, but we've got a couple of problems. For one, right, our fireballs shoot, right? But they only shoot in one direction. If I'm facing left, they don't shoot left. They continue to shoot right. That's problem one. And second problem is our fireballs don't actually collide with anything, right? Now, of course, we don't have enemies on the screen, so they couldn't collide with that. But you might expect fireballs to collide with walls, right? And right now, it's just not doing that. So next time, we're going to tackle that. I promise you. I'd like to thank you all for watching and for following along. It really means a lot to have you here. If you liked today's video, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Tell some friends about this video and maybe get them into game making too. It's always more fun if you can do this kind of thing with friends. The project folder for today's episode and all other episodes in this series, which include the sprite resources and everything exactly as you've seen in the videos, all of that will be available for download on my Patreon page. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link is in the description. And with that, we'll call it a day. So thanks again to everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one real soon. Take it easy.